This entitled dad claims he is going blind so that he can get his family to be his slaves. But there is one request that the daughter won't let him get away with. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. The background. Back in 1999, I moved back with my parents. I had a bout of ill health, and my mum asked me to come back for six months to sort myself out. I was hesitant because I always swore I'd never go back when I left, but my mum, who I'd only started to have a proper relationship with, begged me to come home so she could look after me. Mum was a brick. She really helped me regain my physical and mental strength whilst battling my father, who didn't like the fact that he was not the center of her attention. By the start of 2000, I was much stronger and changed roles at work and was thinking of moving out again, but my father started to lose his eyesight, so I stayed to help my mother deal with his increasingly strange behavior. My mum is also going through health issues and has a number of hospital appointments. The story. September 2000 and the UK is experiencing a fuel protest. No one has any fuel. All essential travel has been stopped. I'm working from home and my lovely new state of the art broadband making calls to my people and keeping updated with them online and on MSN Messenger. Remember that? I have just enough fuel in my car to do the few trips to the hospital appointments that my mum needs. My father announces at breakfast one day that he has bought a bench drill. Now this is something that you bolt to a workbench, is two foot high and used to drill holes in things. Remember, he is going blind. I ask if this is a wise decision. I impromptly shouted at about his rights to buy things that keep him happy because, after all, he is losing his eyesight. Mum and I just shut up and make busy eating our cereal. After about 10 minutes, my father starts again. So we're going to pick up the drill at 10 a.m. I ignore him because I think he's talking about this with my mum. After all, I'm working and have no interest in getting a bench drill. Dad shouting at me. Answer me when I talk to you, LB. Me looks up in surprise. Uh, okay, so you and mum are getting the bench drill at 10 a.m. No. You and I are getting the bench drill at 10 a.m. Um, I'm working. You can take the morning off. No, I can't. I have to work. But you are home. And I've been working from home for the past two weeks because of the fuel shortage. I'm not using my car because I can't get fuel and have been told to work from home by work. Well, you are taking me to get the bench drill. No, I'm not. It's my house and you will do what I tell you. I'm 34. That doesn't work anymore. Dad screaming at the top of his voice. You are taking me. No, at which point I walk out. All I can hear is him shouting and shouting and my poor mum trying to quiet him down. Mum comes up a little while later and knocks on my door. Could you take him later in the week? Not really, mum. I only have enough fuel to do your three hospital visits. If I do this, then I won't have enough. I can take the bus. Now bearing in mind the hospital mum had to go to was two bus rides away and she was having procedures on all three of the visits. You can't. He is being an idiot. Can't he get it delivered? He'll cost me 15 pounds of fuel and he isn't going to pay. Please, for me. And of course, I can't refuse my mum. The next Thursday, I've taken the morning off to take him to get the drill. Turns out the shop he's chosen, you can't park outside. So we have to park a 15 minute walk away. He had managed to not bring any money for the parking. So I end up paying. We get to the shop and the box is huge. About four foot square. I can't lift it. I'm not sure it's going to fit into my 21 year old Ford Fiesta. I just look at my father and say, what the frick? Dad just turns to the guy in the shops and says, I'm going blind. So my daughter will take this to the car. What the bloody freaking heckin' frick? The nice guy in the shop turns to me as I've gone a whiter shade of pale at the sight of this box. Sweetie, are you parked in the cattle market car park? Yes. I've got a big trolley and two big strapping guys who'll take it there for you. And you can be the manager of getting them into the car. Me still whimpering. Thank you. I'm blind, you know. I can't help. Sir, we like to make sales, but if you are blind, should you be buying this for yourself? Health and safety and all that. Oh, I'm going to get my wife to use it. Me and the SK just look at him like he's an idiot. Anyway, the two big strapping guys were politeness embodied and very carefully brought the box to my car, helped me lower the back seats and carefully put it into the
the car. My father was already in the car, seatbelt on, ready to go home and play with his new toy. The two guys both patted me on the shoulder and wished me good luck. I waited for them to leave, then turned to my father. That is never happening again. You are a selfish, ungrateful brat and made me give up my leave and took away a trip to the hospital for mum by car who needs that far more than you need a piece of equipment. I'm going to take you home. I will get this thing out of my car and then you can work out how you are getting it to your shed. Mum is not helping you. She is seriously ill and cannot lift anything. I'm blind! At which I told him to get lost. The outcome. Two weeks later at breakfast, dad announces that he is going to buy another piece of equipment. Mum and I both turn to him and unanimously shout, no. And the hospital appointments? Luckily a week later the fuel protest stopped and I was able to buy a full tank of fuel and take mum to her appointments on her own. If someone's blind or going blind, of course that puts you in an unfortunate situation and you would like others to help you if they could. But that doesn't give you an excuse to be a jerk to all of them and be entitled to every single thing that you want in the world. You know, most people would have sensitivities to it. They'd feel uncomfortable always needing other people's help to do things that they normally could have done themselves. But apparently not for this entitled parent. So I've led a weird life. I was educated up till sixth grade and then pulled out to be homeschooled by my mum for the rest of my school days. Homeschooling was certainly an interesting option. It came with good and bad stuff, such as I have a high school equivalent education, which is good, but I also had very little interaction with others my age during my formative years, which made me an awkward teenager. This story takes place when I was around 14 or 15 and was enrolled in a group called Chef, which is an anagram for Christian home educators of my hometown. Something that I learned while I was enrolled here is that the homeschooling populace in my county was surprisingly full of down-home southern Karens and their delightfully entitled Hexborn, which I have plenty of stories of favoritism and other such garbage that happened while my family was part of Chef. This one, however, is the story of what ultimately ended my family's relationship with Chef, all over some pretty entitled bullcrap. See, you had to pay a yearly fee to be part of Chef, something to the tune of $100 per kid per year, and in return, you got to come to the classes every Tuesday, receive a decent all-day education of the semester's subject, and occasionally go on field trips to local landmarks. Also, socializing with people my own age was definitely nice, even if it was just one day a week. The problems arise when you realize that a lot of the kids were products of their southern church mums, and on top of that, my family wasn't a rich family, and the church kids were all the products of rich families. BMW to celebrate getting your learner's permit rich. Anyway, with that in mind, we move on to the last chef class I would go to. My mum dropped my younger sister and I off at the class, and went to check us in and talk the Karen teacher lady. As we played on the swing set before the class started, I saw my mum coming back over with this angry death glare on her face. She walked up to us and told us that instead of doing the regular end of year celebration, that we were supposed to be doing, the teachers that year had decided that the older classes would do a food collection drive outside one of our local grocery stores for the church's food bank. $200 was a lot to my family growing up, and this was supposed to be the big party that let us spend time with our friends, or few friends in my case, in a barely supervised environment, just having fun. And in my mum's eyes, they were wasting our time and squandering the money my mum had paid them, especially since we were not members of this church and all the other the students were. My sister and I would take an opportunity to socialize, so we told her we were fine with doing this food drive thing. Although we were disappointed because last year, they had rented an inflatable slide that we got to play on all day. Still, it was better than nothing. So we go through this whole day and collect maybe a total of seven or eight pounds of food in various cans and non-perishable bags, while having to represent God with our attitudes, which means no fun or yelling or any of that kind of thing. Standing out outside in the hot sun for six hours. Nothing would have been better. When we got back, we told mum that it sucked and she told Priestess Karen that when we come back next year, I don't want my kids begging for your fake butt food bank. My mum started a food bank for our church and knew what went into making it legal. At the beginning of the next semester, my mum paid the dues and sent in all the proper application forms with a couple of weeks to spare. Everything was going great until the first day. We made it to the class and 
Karen was the first to greet us with a crap-eating grin I will never forget. My mum told us to go play while she talked to Karen for a bit before the class started. About 20 minutes later, she corralled us up and took us home. We were upset and confused, but we rode in silence till we got home and my mum exploded. Turns out, Karen was responsible for the Jews and application for Chef and had conveniently lost my sister and I's until just after the deadline for sign-ups and decided to keep the Jews as a donation to the church. So now, no chef, no socializing, no getting out of the house, and my mum is on a warpath. Like I said, my family wasn't rich, so we couldn't hire a lawyer, and my parents are super libertarians, so they don't want to go to the police either, and in their eyes, it wasn't worth it for $200. But my mum got a decent amount of vengeance for us. First step was telling her other local homeschool mum friends what Karen had done, which caused a lot of mums to pull their kids out of the chef class. Without 12 or so of the 20 some odd kids that were in the class fueling the funds, the class had to shut down. The next step was calling the Federal Trade Commission and getting their fake food bank shut down, which was definitely weird from her considering how anti-government she is, but hey, play the system. Karen was charged with something. I forgot what, but it was minor enough that she got away with a fine. She lost a lot of standing in her church, but there was nothing as dramatic as an excommunication or anything. Just some petty revenge on an entitled church mom that didn't like my family was a blemish in her Christian home educators group. You know, how ridiculous is it that for some of these entitled mums, that there might be this one thing that's really important to some kid. This one group where they get to socialize and just do fun things. But no, they can't let them have that. They have to ruin it. What kind of sad life do you live where that's so important to you to destroy that for someone else? It's 3.25 a.m. this morning. I woke up suddenly without my CPAP on, which is a big no-no, and discovered I had fallen asleep in my recliner in the family room with nothing ready. I proceeded to take care of things around me. I even picked up a plate and trash on it my mum left beside her chair. I am currently sleeping in my recliner as it's easier for me to get out of it after having surgery on my shoulder last Thursday, but I'm going to be back on my bed even if it hurts me after all that happened. After dumping the crumbs and paper towel that was on my mum's plate into the garbage, I had turned around to take it to the sink, where I lost grip of the plate, and it dropped to the floor, and skipped across the tiles with a very loud clatter and crash. Surprisingly, it didn't break. Of course, it woke my mum, and her little blind and diabetic dog too. I proceeded to profusely apologise to her, explained what happened was an accident, and I thought all was okay. She seemed to have calmed down from being startled. Boy, was I grossly mistaken. My mum, after not getting much sleep, decided to be vindictive and woke me up at 5am when she got up to feed the dogs, simply because I was right there. She thought what I did with the plates was on purpose, as I was angry or frustrated all day yesterday, especially after a horrible dental experience. As soon as I told her what she did waking me up was vindictive and immature, she immediately became defensive and attempted to justify her actions. She did eventually concede and said she agreed with me that what she did was wrong and passively apologized. I really didn't believe her apology as she does have a vindictive streak. I've seen her be vindictive and cynical towards others many, many times. We then proceeded to have a blown up yelling match. I gave her specific examples of it, such as her waking me up just because. She either says something to justify her actions and or what she said. She even said, I know you got mad enough that you wanted to hurt me during our fight just to get under my skin. I told her, Yes, I was that angry, but I know that hitting others is never justified. My mum, even when provided with direct examples, refused to acknowledge that what she said or had done was wrong and that it was just your perspective. She hates it when my brother does that to her and I told her he got that trait from her and she even wonders why I don't talk to her about my personal feelings and issues. I explained to my mum a bit. She had a very bad father. He stopped having anything to do with her from the age of 5 to 15, all because she said something to the group of men her father was speaking to when she was five years old. Her father died from a stroke when she was 16. She says she doesn't have any daddy issues and that she got past his neglect without any residual issues. Right. She absolutely refuses to speak to a counsellor and even this morning told me, if you want to see one or talk to one, go ahead. I've got the tools to deal with my own problems. Yeah, she has an associate's degree in social work and never worked in that field. She denies that she is resentful that I had surgery last week to fix 
fix the arm. I had a plate and metal screws put in for my proximal humerus fracture, but her action and words tell me otherwise. She also did admit something to me. She is indeed very resentful and even spiteful over me seeing all these doctors, even necessary visits with specialists, and having regular doctor's appointments. She even said, a lot of your problems could be handled by your primary, if at all. I told her, fine, I'll stop seeing the nephrologist, as my kidneys are fine and have been for a while, and the urologist too. The urologist I was referred to for my kidney stones, or whatever the pain on my left side is, was an arrogant and condescending jerk who talked down to me. Whatever the pain is that flares up on my left side, I'll just live with it. If it kills me, oh well. My mum tried to make me feel guilty by saying she has been holding off on getting things taken care of, like her knee or back. I pointed out to her that she can always make an appointment with the doctor, and there are plenty of open days on the calendar. Her not seeing a doctor isn't my problem. It is her choice. She even acted envious that I'm getting my colonoscopy first. She was also upset when I told her I couldn't take her or pick her up from her colonoscopy. I haven't been cleared to drive due to my surgery. I was going to schedule it for once you've been cleared. That's not what she said when she was talking about getting one. I may let her have my appointment just so she gets a colonoscopy. I'm young enough that I can live another year without one, even with all my health problems. Also, to add icing to the cake, I had a horrible dentist experience yesterday. I've had a couple of teeth on the lower left that lost their fillings and tooth material a while back. I've just kept them clean as possible to prevent an infection. It wasn't until my left arm was put back together last week that I started to have tooth pain in one or both teeth. So I, thinking I was being proactive, decided to schedule an appointment with a dentist ASAP. After I'd scheduled the appointment, and even up to an hour before the appointment, my mum was criticizing my decision to see a dentist. When I said I would cancel the appointment, my passive aggressive mother would tell me, no, don't, let's see what the dentist has to say. Well, there wasn't enough on one tooth, so the dentist tried to pull it. He was unsuccessful. So now I'm on antibiotics to prevent an infection. I have a sore jaw and half a tooth in my mouth. I guess you can say I speak in half tooths. <laughs> I at least got a referral to see an oral surgeon so he can get what's left out, but I can't see him until September. Ugh. So now I painfully wait for the oral surgeon with half a tooth left in my jaw with the nerve exposed. Oh well, my life is a storm. It may be a cramp storm with mudslides, but it's a storm. You know, people can be jealous over a lot of things, but I've never heard of somebody jealous over other people's surgeries before. I suppose if it's just in your nature to be jealous about things and that's the thing that's going on, then it makes sense, maybe? But it's pretty petty considering you're saying, oh, I wish you didn't have that health thing so I could have it instead. Especially for your own family members, that's pretty bad. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.